I hadn't expected much to happen at the award dinner that night. Some free drinks and idle conversation with Bjorn, and that was about it. I certainly had expected to run into my old associate all over, yet this meeting wasn't really a cause for celebration. I couldn't help but feel that something was very, very wrong with all over. I didn't like the look of some of the people she was hanging around with either. There seemed to be a darkness to her now. There was something I could sense in my gut. Hopefully, I'm just imagining things. Perhaps I had too much to drink. Not like it would be the first time. This is Red Moon Roleplay. Bjorn, you don't know why exactly, but you, you have this you have this strange feeling that you're being watched. Well, I keep my appearances, and uh, as we cross corners and uh, less apparent places, I I throw a throw an eye in possible directions. You look around you. You know exactly what and where to look. Around you is mostly four-story buildings, parked cars. Is that... Was that... Up there... On the roof of that building? Was that a figure wearing night vision goggles? You aren't sure. And the alcohol isn't exactly helping to keep your mind clear. But... You feel pretty certain that that's what you saw. You alright, Bjorn? You seem a little bit distracted. Yeah, it's just, you know, it happened a lot. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm mostly just thinking about Magda, you know. Just, just. Ah, yes, yes, I, I understand. I was concerned as well, really. I do hope she gives us a ring or something if she actually has any trouble. You arrive back at the apartment. Herman uh, opens the door for you, still wearing his suit. In spite of it being in the middle of the night, he smiles at you. Herman, how are you? Oh, good, sir. I hope you had an enjoyable night. It was lovely. How's your been? Oh, you know, the same old. Herman smiles at you, Carver, as well. Bjorn, you've moved on ahead, and uh, Carver, for for a second, as if, as if the, the smile warps slightly in a very unnatural way. When you look again, everything is normal. I'd be grateful for some food, and I I definitely think I've had enough drink. Although it's weird, because I, I feel quite sober, I think to myself. But, hmm, never mind. You get back to the apartment. I'm, I'm just, can I have a little look around just to see if there's anything that feels a bit strange about the apartment? You have a look around, you know this place like the back of your hand, and... Checking a place like this is something you've done a million times, finding um, anything that, that may be threatening. Uh, there's nothing here. Some cat hairs that you don't enjoy being there. Okay, I noticed those, so yeah. How's my cactus? Your cactus is alive and well. Good, good, good. I give it a spray with a spray bottle. And the... If a cactus could smile, it's smiling at you right now, Bjorn. I smile back. What's his bathroom like? The marble floor extends into the bathroom. Inside of it is mostly white, except for uh, the bathtub that is, is, it looks like sort of a black marble. I don't, don't know what exactly it is, but it's a quite spacious tub. And the decor of like the sink and your cabinets, would you say that was all very modern? Yes, very modern, very clean. Hmm. Excellent. I, I wash up, I look in a reflective surface, a very modern reflective surface, and I take a little easy breath to myself as I clean myself up and, uh, yeah, get ready for a uh, bed. And you fall asleep. You are dreaming. You are in a dark room, lying on a hard floor. You are both dreaming this, although, of course, not aware that the other is seeing the same things. It's bitterly cold, and the walls are covered in frost and dripping water. 
you realize that your body is much smaller than it should be. You're a child. There's an unpleasant, sweet smell that hangs in the air. The darkness surrounding you is so dense that you can almost touch it. Something's moving out there. Something you can only sense. Scraping and hissing noises start to encircle you in the darkness. You're forced to crawl into a corner, shaking. Bjorn, you wake up. It's still the middle of the night. You're sweating profusely and you realize that you're burning up. You have a fever, a very high fever. Uh, I'm gonna go and find some painkillers to try and lower the fever. You, you try to get up, but your body is extremely heavy, or perhaps it's just weakness. There's red lights coming through the blinds and the windows. I, I try to roll off the bed. You do, and, and as you roll off, you kind of you can't really get up properly. You fall down and sort of hit yourself a little bit, uh, falling off the bed. I'm trying to open the uh, my bedside table. And, and, and you do. What do you take out of your bedside table? I, I take out a gun. Does it feel like I'm poisoned? Mm, poisoned? You're definitely sick. But it, it's... You haven't been sick like this since you were a child. You must be having like 40 degrees fever or something like that. You can barely move. So I, I, can I take it out from there? You can, you can, you can move, but it's it's tough. It really requires a lot of effort from you to do it. Okay, I, I take it out and I keep my hand under the bed uh, where I have the gun and I s start shouting for Carver. Carver, Carver. Carver, you're sleeping in uh, the guest room, right? Yes. yes. Carver does not wake up. What do you do, Bjorn? Uh, is there, is there any way that I could get 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 out get get myself the painkiller there there in the bathroom? Though? You think so? Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna very carefully uh, pair pair up from the side of the bed and look out the window. What's 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 the red light? You move towards the windows. It's the windows in the living room, you know, the big ones. Uh, facing the... facing outwards. Facing towards the lake. Yeah. You can open them if you want. The uh, blinds. Yeah. I, I stand on the side of the window and I open the blind. You open the blind. And you're faced with a figure wearing night vision goggles standing right in front of the window, seemingly hanging in the middle of the air. Raise the gun. You're struggling to raise the gun. The man lifts the night vision goggles, revealing his face. You know this face. It's the face of him. Shit. 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 Not tonight. Not now. It's the face... Of Vova, Vova Sessionov. He's here, right outside your window. How could he have found you here? What do you want? You yell to the window. Nothing happens. You, 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 uh, you close your eyes and you open them again, and, and there's nobody there. The, the world is floating. Your eyes are heavy and. The, Colors aren't as they should be. Roll to keep it together. Okay, I roll... 13. 13. You do manage to keep it together, but you will incur a condition. Guilt. Minus one stability. Exactly. Guilt over over what ended up happening to him whether it was directly because of you or not he certainly blames you for that and at this moment you feel guilt over that but he's no longer there in front of the window you realize that you're still holding up the gun I sigh and I put it down and I I've, I lay down on the carpet I'm just exhausted yeah, you have only one wish, to, to lay down in bed again, 
Do you yeah. try to get back or do you lay down here? No, I, I still... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, screw the painkillers. I can't even make myself go to the bathroom anymore. I, I'm, I'm just gonna get up and stumble over to the bed. And, uh, keep the gun under the pillow. Yeah. The dream comes back to you several times that night. Every time the scraping and hissing noises in the darkness. And this affects you as well, Carver. When the morning finally comes, both of you are still burning up with fever. The slightest moves hurt. Hmm. I would definitely be a little confused at this as I wake up and feel awful. I've already been putting the memories of the dream behind me. For me, I just assumed it was another dream. I've had many like that before. You have. You You feel a little bit stronger, but... You feel strong enough to, to find a, a thermometer to, to check your temperature. Bjorn, you're the one who knows where that is. Indeed, it's... You have 40 degrees. Oh, oh this is not good. We got so much to do today already. What? How are you feeling? Oh, God. <laughs> I feel terrible, actually. Oh. The colors are still wrong and floating. Sorry, I feel like I'm hallucinating a bit. <laughs> I, I, I go make progress to the kitchen to get a glass of water. You go to the kitchen to get a glass of water. Bjorn, what do you do? Uh, the windows and the blinds that are still closed, they kind of beckon. Yeah, I want to I wanna go over there and I want to, I kind of want to go, uh, so was this a window not with a balcony under it? Exactly. So this man, this man that you, yeah. that you know as Vova, he was impossibly hanging in the air in front of the window. You really doubt that what you saw was real, but it certainly felt real. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that, that thing just there, I'm trying to convince myself just that, okay, that, that wasn't real. That was You look around and you check the other windows, um, yeah. as well. Yeah. You notice something out of the ordinary. You don't need to roll for this. Something that immediately stands out to your experienced eyes. There's a metallic Dodge van with tinted windows parked by the side of the road outside your window. Huh. What catches your eyes is the vehicle's license plate. It's obscured. It looks like dirt, but you know from experience that is not dirt. That is intentional. That is indeed intentional. Okay, I'm gonna make my way over to the phone and I'm gonna ask about my driver. I'm gonna call the company. You uh, go to the phone, you call the company. Mm -hmm. You realize that you're, that you're still so tired. The voice shifts pitch and slows down and, and speeds up. It's really difficult to keep that conversation going. Hello? You realize suddenly that uh, the call has been cut off. Uh, Maybe they hung up. Uh, yeah, I, just, oh, I feel, I feel awful. Do you um, check the fridge? Do we have anything to eat? I don't want to eat. Uh. I come out of the kitchen and, nursing my head, drinking the water, I look at Bjorn. I have a bit of concern, because he seems to me very more than just ill, doesn't he? He does, he does. And Bjorn, you see the same thing uh, with Carver. You're both afflicted with uh, with something. During the day, uh, one of you uh, is able to get enough energy to call Herman, uh, call the concierge, to get food delivered. You're in no shape to, to cook anything. And he arranges a delivery from uh, from the Fairmont Hotel. It's exquisite food, but you find yourself only being able to eat very, very little. Most goes to waste. And the day passes so quickly. Uh, it passes 
quicker than, than, than any other day has ever passed. You, you have to lie down quite a bit. You, you try to get up, but mm. you find yourself having to go back to, uh, go back to the bed mm. throughout the I, day. I would have attempted to at least look at the books a little, but I'm guessing I probably would, don't make much progress at all. No, you make almost no progress whatsoever. Um, Bjorn, the night comes. Is there something you would like to do before then? Anything you try to... Um, uh, let's see. Would I have a... Would I have a contact that would... Uh, find out who... W- what the deal is with the van? You start to think about it, but you're, yeah, it just feels so heavy. You have to lay down. This is just not going to happen today. And the night comes again, and so does the nightmares. The same dream, the same dream again and again and again. It's never, never ending. Carver, then you wake up. It's just you. Red lights are coming through the windows, beckoning you. I look a little confused seeing this kind of try to ignore it for a bit. Again, I go to the kitchen to get a glass of water because I'm hoping it gives me some comfort. The uh, You still have the same um, amount of fever. It almost feels like it's getting worse. Um, you you, you uh, grab, grab the water and it does offer a little bit of relief. The red lights continue coming in through the blinds. I start to approach the lights not exactly fearful I don't see why I would be at this point more irritated what on earth is that and I just sort of peek out the blind you peek out and you see a blasted hellscape as if the entire city had been scorched by nuclear fire or is it even a city it's isn't it the house you grew up in burnt by the fire that you caused it's a city again But this time, but this time it's winter, it's night, you're freezing, you have seen this before in your flashbacks, you're freezing, you feel hungry like you have so many times before when you've seen the city, you see people walk past you huddled, emaciated, dying, all of them feel a haunting, uncontrollable fear. It's it's coming for you soon, Carver. Explosions go off in the distance and the sky is lit up. You open your eyes again, it's the nuclear fire again. And massive worm-like creatures in black and yellow are standing in the ground, their heads or ends probing the sky above. They stop. And they turn to face you. They see you, Carver. They see you. Roll to keep it together. 16. 16. You use all of your mental strength to push this aside, to control it. And you're successful in doing so. And you find yourself for just a moment feeling almost like yourself again as you back away from the window. Yes, I feel... I close my eyes and I just say to myself, this isn't real. It's not real. Just wake up. You... Don't know how it happens, but you find yourself back in the bed again. It's morning again. The next morning, maybe? Monday? You think? Bjorn, you find yourself looking out the window. The van is out there again. You hear the mail being posted through the door. It's, it's late. It's not, it's not early in the morning. You've slept a long time. How am I feeling, huh? You feel still terrible. Check my fever again. Still 40. I say aloud, 
Bjorn, when when, 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 when did you wake up? How long have I been sleeping? Uh, I don't know. Just, uh, what, did you wake up half an hour ago? It's about, it's about two, so half past one, I guess. The phone rings. Uh, could you check the mail for me, please? And I go check the phone. Sure, I go check the mail. You start moving towards the door for the mail again. It's still very tough to, to move with the, the fever. Uh, you pick up the phone, Bjorn. Is someone asking for Carver? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's right here. Sorry, um... Is, Car- who is this? Uh, my name is uh, Weber, Hans Weber. Carver will know what this is about. Sure. Uh, Carver, this is uh, Hans Weber for you. Oh, Hans Weber. Yes, oh, f- fine. Uh, I go over to collect the call. You have the mail with you. Bjorn, I guess you see the mail that he's holding. Yeah, I'm taking it from him. The mail has been opened. Huh. Carver, the phone. It is Hans Weber. He's, <laughs> but he's speaking backward. As you can't understand anything he's saying. <sighs> Sorry, could you repeat that, Mr. Weber? No, the book. You need to give me the book, Carver. You need to give me the book. Give me the book. I give me I've the book, s- mis- Mr. Weber. You I have I've to give said me the book. I don't have it give anymore. Give me the book. He keeps repeating it again and again and again and again. I just. I hang up the phone. How did he get this number? He doesn't have his number. He shouldn't. I'm opening the mail and checking the ones that are open. You um, are checking the ones that have been opened. Yeah, someone has um, has applied a a letter opener to to this mail. They've tried to cover it up, but it's very poor job of hiding it. Carver, did you give my number to someone? No. No, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I don't know how that individual got this number, but uh, don't don't worry about it. It, it. It's nothing. It's nothing. Someone's knocking at the door, violently. Uh, fuck, this is just too much. You um, start to hear someone kicking in the door now. Oh shit. Dunk, uh, dunk. I'm gonna go and try to get my gun. <laughs> you, uh, get over to the, the bedside table. You have the gun in your hand now, and all of a sudden, Carver, you see Bjorn standing there with a gun? Uh, is that necessary, Bjorn? Where did you Shh, I didn't even know quiet. you had a- And I move, I move up towards the door. It's quiet again. Did you just hear someone knock the door? Yes, I certainly did. Is there a is there a, a looking eye? Can I can I look it through it to the outside? You look outside. There's nobody there. Did you hear someone just trying to kick in the door? Yes, I did. Bjorn, I'm not messing with you. There's a light knock on the I'm door. I'm thinking we might need to Wait. I hold up my hand and I, I look through again. Still no one there. I fucking am losing it, man. I tell I'm losing it. There's no one. We're clearly not well. I we, we need to get someone in here who isn't unwell. God damn it. Okay, I try to determine if it's safer from if it's if if in my current state I can go out and. Uh, and face a possible threat. With the gun in your hand, you feel a lot of confidence. All right. Uh, I'm gonna unlock the door and and throw it open. You unlock the door. You throw it open. You look outside. And a massive yellow worm-like head stares right into you. Only centimeters from your face, it opens an impossibly large maw and snaps to bite your head off. Everything turns red and you feel your eyeballs popping out as your skull is crushed. Roll to keep it together. What do I see while I notice him go out the door? You see Bjorn just standing there looking out the door. He looks Uh, like he's terrified. What did you get? Fifteen. 
you roll 15, which means that you are able to, to close your eyes and think that this is not real. And you make it so. You make this not be real. It isn't real. It couldn't be real. <laughs> of course, it's not real. And when you open your eyes again, it's just an empty hallway there. You still stand there holding your, your gun, gripping it with a firm grip. I'm uh, looking back at, at, at Kara. I see you, Eddie. Is anyone there? No, I, I, and I look back to the corridor, and I'm, I'm going to move out and, and, and look in the staircase. And, or uh, at the hallway. There's nothing there. It's empty. Completely quiet. Okay. The adrenaline starts to wear off and you start to feel the, the fever again. Uh, I lower the gun and I just rub my forehead and uh, go back into the apartment. I go to the phone and try and ring the number for emergency services. What are you doing? I think we need, like, a doctor. I mean, there's something wrong with us. Like food poisoning. We've caught some weird tropical disease. I don't know. But we need to... We can't just stay in this apartment until we... God knows what happens. That's right. You're right. You're right. We need a, We need medical attention. This is, mm. uh, this is hallucinations. We're having fe feverish hallucinations. Hmm. Uh. You start to move towards the phone. Do you call for an ambulance, or uh, do, you, uh, do you have a doctor, maybe, that you have a connection with? I think I'd look to Bjorn, and I'd say, you surely have, like, a private GP or something, right? Yeah, we have the company doctor. It's Monday. He should be in. I, uh, I should call, uh, I should call, I should call the, the reception of the company. Anyway, you, uh, you 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 stand up to make the call, and you you look up and you realize that it's eleven o'clock at night. The entire day has passed. Wait, wait, what? Uh, what? What time is it, Carver? It's your clock. I don't know. It was like ten in the morning, or oh. No, we got up at 11. one. When you dial the number, no one picks up, as expected, in the middle of the night. Oh, At least no, on this I number. Oh, I can't. I... The bed beckons again. Oh, well, I, I, I was going to try and make my way to the door, but do I fail? Okay. You can make it to the door. What do you try to do? I try to get, like, just see if I can even get out onto the street out of the building. You don't think you can make it down the stairs. Damn it. And somehow you find yourself asleep again. Exhausted. But this time it's a dreamless sleep. You think you... Yeah, that's the sound of the phone ringing. Is it Tuesday already? Oh, oh, I sit up in bed. What's, uh, oh, error. Hey, you must have slept for 12 hours? It's like 11. You still feel tired and weak, but the fever is lower now. The signals keep coming in. Whoever is calling seems to be very intent on speaking to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm making my way out into the living room and get the phone. You make it to the phone. Hello, is, is this Björn von Krusenstjerne? Yeah, this is Björn. Uh, hello, my, my name is Irene Adler. You, you know the name. She's, um... She is... She used to be the editor for the magazine Survey Germany. That you know that Magda also used to write for. She, you notice her stuttering a, a little bit. Got a, a little bit of a frantic tone in her voice. Ah, uh, Miss Miss uh, Miss Adler, you're uh, for the uh, the uh, what's it called the, the Germany? Um... Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I, I used to work for for Survey uh, G Germany. Right. Uh, that is not why I'm I'm calling Mr. von Christenkran. I'm 
I'm calling. I, I mean, I know maybe it's silly for me to, to 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 just call you on this, but um, I have to say I, I'm calling about um, I'm calling about Magda Orlova. You know her, yes? Yeah, that's funny. You should say that. We actually met her at the other night at the. Uh... Yeah, I'm. So I'm. I'm very worried. We were supposed to have lunch yesterday, but she never showed up, and, and she didn't. She didn't call me. I tried calling, and I visited her apartment, but. No answer, and, and nobody opened the door. It's really not like her. Um, she mentioned that, that, that she'd met you on Saturday um, at that award ceremony. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah, I, I thought I thought maybe you'd, you'd heard something from her. I really I just hope nothing has happened to her. Listen here, uh, what happened? Me and my uh, colleague and advisor here, uh, Mr. Carver, uh, something that night got us both in a fever i'm telling you we've got we've been knocked out for two days um and we obviously had the same things as her so the chances are that she is probably just as bad as us so um yeah she she if you haven't heard from her it might just be that she is recovering as well i don't know uh, yeah i mean she seems so upset when she came back from berlin and you know she has she has her history right I mean, I, 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 I shouldn't say more over the phone. I'm, I'm really worried, um, and I know this is a strange request coming from someone that... But do you think we could meet? Um, for all I know, you're the last ones to see her in person, and I really want to find her. Would, would you be able to, 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 to come meet me at, at the Crane? The Crane is a, is a cafe close by. Yeah, brunch would be terrific. Tell you what, we haven't eaten properly and just been bedridden, and I think we're feeling a little better. I'm, I'm looking towards the guest room. Is Carver there? Uh, is he up? You are up, Carver. Hmm. I suppose I've woken up, and as you said, feel a little better. I kind of groan a little, come out, and I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm awake. I'm awake. Uh, do you mind if I bring my associate, uh, Irene? Uh, he's uh, he's a friend of Magnus as well. He'd probably be interested. Oh yes, yes, I understood that that you uh, met her together. Uh, it'd be very, um, it would be fantastic if I could speak to to both of you. Sh- shall we say the crane then? In uh, maybe a- an hour? Yeah, sure. This is uh, this is unofficial. Oh, of course, of course. I'm I'm retired, so it's. Uh... Yeah. All right, just checking, just checking. All right, Arena, see you there in an hour. We should be fine for that. Yes, see you. I'm so happy that you agreed to meet me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm moving over to the window and just looks out. The van is still there. The van is nowhere to be seen. I step over. I say, we're going where? Who now? Oh, uh, it's just a cafe. It's just around the corner. Just, uh, just for a brunch. This was a... Uh, uh, I don't say I know her. It's a, it's a woman called Irene. She's working for a survey. Used to work for Survey Germany. So, anyways, what the thing is that uh, she was supposed to have heard from Magda around these days. I mean, yesterday or so, and uh, hadn't heard from her. Was worried, and she knew this, that she was a mutual acquaintance, and so wanted to see us. I mean, I'm not the closest person to Magda, so it was a little bit weird, I guess, but. Uh, we did see her that evening, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, ju- I'm just thinking that maybe she's been through the same thing as us. She, uh, maybe if she was in a weakened state, it might have hit her a bit harder. Bjorn, you, uh, you notice um, as you're standing there close to the phone that the answering machine has uh, received messages. Well, there's one message at least. Oh, hey, sorry, I. I do you want to get dressed and uh, freshened up and we'll get this uh, we'll get out uh, I'll, I'll click the play yes what do you do Carver if we're feeling better I remarked to be all allowed god damn it we must have got some major food poisoning oh god can you get that sort of thing from champagne <laughs> I don't even know yeah uh, I'm not sure I want to know that it's... I'm mm. feeling a little better a little better so at least that's mm. good. Uh, What's the message? Yeah, let's hear it. Um, it's a woman's voice. She's speaking uh, Swedish. Björn, är du där? Svara då. Det jag, det är Sandra. Jag vet att det har gått bara 15 år sedan vi såg sist, men... 
Björn, pappa är död. Vi behöver dig nu. Ring mig. Okej. Okay. Ja, yeah, well, this... Uh... Uh, it's an old relative. Yeah. You don't speak Swedish, do you? Uh, no, I don't actually. Yeah. Nah, just, just, just rule it. <laughs> Nothing important. Huh. Uh, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm gonna get freshened up as well and get ready to go. Of course. I, I go to freshen up myself, stare at the mirror for a bit. I'm a little bit annoyed at all this, actually, uh kind of thought that my dreams were calming down a little of late. This has concerned me, but I guess I have just had a major fever. Alright. Uh, I, I, I make a mental note to send a, a card of condolences to Jörn's family. The Crane. It's a small, overly expensive cafe furnished with heavy oak tables Vintage armchairs, Turkish rugs, and valuable art in the walls. Uh, it's one of those places where you really have to pay a lot for just a simple cup of coffee. Irene Adler um, meets you there. She's a well-kept 60-year-old woman with bleached blonde hair and exclusive clothing. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, she says, and leads you over to a table to sit down. Although I, I wish the circumstances were different. Tell me, uh, how do how do you know Magda? Well, it turns out we've got our own stories here. Um, Carver here, I believe you uh, you knew her from back when she had an antique bookstore. Is that right? Yes, um, early in the start of my career, actually, uh, she had a very good collection back in that store. I went there on behalf of some clients and did some good deals with her. We had quite a good relationship for. A short while there while I was in Germany. Uh, she was actually doing a bit of a piece uh, on my work uh, in uh, in eighty uh, seven, I think it was. Yeah, uh, about uh, the privatization of uh, companies in East Germany. Yeah, of of the. Yeah. Oh, that would have been like eighty you know. nine. Yeah, after the wall fell. Uh, was I? Yeah, I think we actually first. We we got notion of each other. That's right. Yeah, we got notion of each other in '87 because I was. She knew that I was having these ideas, but that they were impossible <laughs> to to perform. But yeah, it it, turn, it had to wait until '89 until we could actually start putting things into practice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she she did mention uh, meeting the the two of you, and I mean, she I've, did. I've known her. Yeah, you know, she said that it was so fun, so fantastic to, to meet the both of you again and and like being reunited with friends she she kept saying it's it's the, you know one of the best things that one can be through and and um and she seemed really happy and, and relieved and i was really looking forward to um to, to the meal we were gonna have together but then she didn't show up you know i've known her since 81 um after she first uh moved to hamburg on the phone, I'm, I'm, I remember mentioning something about her history. You know, I, I've been thinking, you know, I, I know that she left East Germany in, what was it, 77 maybe? Um, after spending two years, uh, she was in prison there. Did you know that? Over that book that she wrote about the black market. Oh, yeah. Actually, we were having a discussion about the black market. I thought that was pretty interesting and, and like quite impossible not for such a, a, a development seeing as how hard it was for East Germany to get the supplies they needed and um, and, and she, you know she it got a lot of positive recognition in the west but in the east you know obviously you can't write stuff like that yeah, so they, yeah, they threw yeah. her in prison uh, and then they kicked her out and uh, you know after the wall fell she again returned to Berlin and you know she only came back to Hamburg a few weeks ago it was great um, seeing her again but did you notice that she uh, uh, she appeared completely changed. I mean, it had been a while since I saw her, but she shouldn't have changed that much. As if she had prematurely aged. I wondered if she'd had some illness recently, but didn't obviously ask outright. Yeah, yeah. Would you know anything about that? That's what we were thinking, that perhaps she was ill from something. She continually washed herself and uh, applied heavy perfume. You smell that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, she was like... It's almost as if she was ashamed, you know, or trying to hide. I don't know. I'm sorry. I feel a bit uncomfortable. It's a bit weird to talk about this. Uh, 
Could I get the avocado and the poached eggs, please, and an espresso? Sorry. <clears throat> I order something as well, but um, I probably it's probably been quite obvious I've been distracted during this whole conversation. I'm still inwardly not feeling well, annoyed that I don't feel well, and really want to go home and check my apartment as soon as possible. Indeed. She she was wearing thick clothes, you know, despite the summer heat. She seemed extremely nervous, but, like, she wouldn't say why. Did she say anything to you? She talked about how she was having nightmares. Trouble sleeping, yes. Yeah. What else did we talk about? It, was most, it seems like that really was, like, plaguing her. Yeah. She always suffered... She'd always suffered psychological issues. I know that much. Uh, and maybe the nightmares are somehow related to that. I mean, mm. I, I, it feels really wrong of me to say this, but, I, but since you are her friends as well, I feel comfortable doing it. She has been confined to mental hospitals. I know both the, the Johannes Hospital Psychiatric Clinic in, mm. in old East Berlin, and then also... When did this happen? Oh, it was years ago. I don't know for sure. She just mentioned that she'd been in, in, in those hospitals. She didn't really want to talk about it, but... We were quite close, or we are quite close. Uh, why, why would I say were? I mean, we are quite close. Um, yeah, she'd been to this uh, clinic in Frankfurt under order by the, the Polish border also. Two different um, mental hospitals. <sighs> but I also know that she'd had a very tough life, you know, losing her husband to that awful disease. Those black boils. It sounds like a nightmare. Black boils? Yeah, and, and you know, then and being thrown in prison. I mean, people would lose their minds completely for, for less. Funny that you say that about the mental hospitals and things. I didn't actually know that. Uh, me and Carver were actually we were talking uh, with her in the night that she should perhaps uh, see someone to talk about things because she was she was she mentioned uh, the the her troubled childhood and. We were thinking that she she actually described her dreams for us, and it sounded very much like a child's. I look a bit disturbed all of a sudden. I clear my throat, and then I ask, "Where, where is she staying at the moment? Do do you know?" She has a, an apartment here, uh, here in Hamburg, actually. It's over on Lübeckerstrasse, uh, forty one. It's it's uh, over in Hohenfeld. Um, <laughs> you know, I. <sighs> This whole thing has left me a complete mess. I mean, I, I actually went over to her apartment when, you know, when I was looking for her now. Um, just knocked the door, tried to get her to open. She wasn't there. And, and I completely forgot about the fact that I, I mean, I have the key. It's, oh. This has really gotten to me. She puts down a, a key on the table and, and pushes it over to you. I know this is a strange thing to ask of you, but could you perhaps try to find her? I, this is... This is just too much for me. Uh, she, something must have happened to her. I mean, because I, I know she isn't crazy, you know? She's a little off balance. Yeah. The treatments helped her and she came out okay. And, and, and now there's something else going on. Something must have happened when she moved back to Berlin. I'm right to worry, though, right? This isn't just me overreacting. She seems uh, very... No, I, I, she did seem frail. Um, I would... I would not, uh, yeah, well, what do you say, Carver, should we, uh, spit with, should we have a look? I think I'd like to just deal with some things first, but... Yeah, yeah. Today, yes, today, yes, I, I admit I'm a, there's no harm in checking. Alright, alright, we'll have some breakfast, and we'll do that, I'm gonna just get something from my apartment as well, and we can, uh, um, do we have your number, uh, Carver, do you want to write down uh, Irene's number? So here's uh, here's my card. Oh, Sorry. thank you. Thanks. So you get her her uh, contact information. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, please, uh, can you find can you find her? Make sure that she's okay. We'll check in on her just to see if she's okay because I'm worried that if she had whatever we've had, her age. Hmm. But, uh, I'm sure she'll be fine though. Uh, I'm sure yeah. she'll be fine. Yeah. She was so happy to be reunited with you. I'm I'm sure she'll be really. Really happy and relieved when you when you find her, and, and so so will I. Sure. Um, it was very nice meeting you. Um, I, I actually have to, I actually have to go. This is, 
left me quite tired. I see. Yeah, no worries. She gets up, uh, puts money... Oh, no, no, don't worry about that. I got that, I got that. She, she, she nods, uh, thankfully, and uh, she leaves. You have a uh, chance here to, of course, uh, have a breakfast. Uh, or, I guess, it's it's basically lunchtime now, but for you it's early. Mm. Yeah. Since I'm you a, just I'll, woke I'll, up. I want to... I want to have my breakfast, my avocado and poached eggs and my espresso. Yeah, that should get me on my feet again. Okay, you finish off your breakfast. Lübeckerstrasse, it's uh, about 10 minutes away on the on the U-Bahn, or uh, if you go by car, to uh, to the crane, who's basically walking distance for you. Where would you uh, like to go next? Thinking of ta- moving distances, I'm, I, I think I'd, I want to get back up and I want to ask about my driver and what happened. And I would like to arrange to meet Bjorn at the location but I want to just go back to my apartment and just get a moment to myself check on Jenkins and sort of feel a bit more normal again. I I go up to mine and do you take off as well then in in your car? Yes uh, I guess my car probably would have just been at yours actually yeah I would have driven to yours but I'm probably not that much further away my apartment would be somewhere central. Indeed it is so you have your uh, your car. What kind of car is it? My car is a really old, rundown, <laughs> not very fancy car. Uh, is that I, ideally that one we discussed before? I think looked like a good fit. Yes, indeed. It's an East German, uh, a Trabi, a Trabant, the East German people's car. They're all over uh, East Germany. It's super cheap to get a hold of, especially now as uh, you know these Germans are scrambling to pick up. Uh, nicer uh, West German cars, uh, at least the ones who can afford to. Very uh, inconspicuous car, in a sense. Yes, and it's a dull grey. <laughs> yes, color. indeed. You start heading towards your uh, apartment, then Carver. Yeah. Yes. And then Bjorn, you. Yeah, I want to get up and I want to make a phone call and see if I can sort out what happened to my driver and maybe pick up something from the apartment. I'm actually. Uh, a little bit on edge. I feel still. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, I don't know. Put on a holster and bring a gun. I, don't, I feel like I should do that. I don't know why. That is indeed how you feel. Um, you know, the fever has uh, gone down. It's just, just slightly higher. You know, than uh, th- than than what is normal. You feel basically okay. And, and eating something again, like eating properly, like you just did, mm. it really gives you a lot of energy back. You make it back to your apartment. And you uh, try to get a hold of the company uh, about the the driver. Yeah. And there seems to be uh, have been some long string of uh, misunderstandings, and there's a lot of apologies on the phone and promises that this will never, of course, happen again, and uh, that the the people responsible will be, of course, reprimanded in, in in the correct way. Doesn't seem to be any real explanation of exactly what happened. Just a lot of excuses. Yeah, well, I'm going to be quite persistent that I like this driver and I want this driver and uh, that he comes to pick me up for the next time. Yes, the next time, definitely. All right. And um, you get your gun, you get your holster. Good. And you're ready to go where? I'm going to head for for Magda's place, yeah. You can head for Magda's place. And you uh, go there by car, or do you take the U-Bahn? Which is the, the train, the commuter train, basically. I would either, I think, yeah, either take a, a cab or my car. But I think, I, I think I'll drive. I think it'd feel nice to drive myself for a bit. Yeah, I like driving. Yeah, you find your uh, your Mercedes, so it's a W140, was it? Mm-hmm. Find it uh, parked nicely. Uh, driver did that. Um, okay. And uh, you take off towards Magnus' place. Carver, what are you doing in your apartment? So, I go in, enter, look around, call out for Jenkins. Jenkins, you uh, here, boy? <laughs> After uh, a brief period of uh, silence, Jenkins does show up, looking very happy. Well, if cats can look happy looking very excited and as if he's waiting for something. I give him 
a stroke on the head and I go, I'm so sorry, buddy. And I go to quickly open a can of tuna for him. And he munches down on it and uh, just finishes it really quickly. And it looks like he, he's still expecting more. Hmm. I open up a second can. And uh, you feed Jenkins and... Um, do you want to spend uh, a little bit of time here with Jenkins? Or do you uh, want to rush off to Magnus? Mm, to be honest, I do feel we need to be in a hurry. So what I do do is I give him a little further pet. I remark to him... Oh, I really needed you the last day or two. Never mind. And then I go to change my clothes, because I'm pretty sure I've probably been wearing that suit, right? well, my smart shirt, for probably the last two, three fever-ridden days. And I change into a slightly more relaxed shirt, put on my normal outside jacket, and take a few breaths and get ready to go and meet Bjorn at Magda's. That is what you do. You get into... Uh your car then into your uh, trabby it's quite noisy and uncomfortable but uh, you've gotten used to it and you arrive at Lieberkerstrasse 41 number 41 is a, is a rather elegant five story building it's a greyish green with a turn of the century look heavy door to the building you're standing uh, outside there the two of you having met up what do you do? I've got my long coats on and uh, my driving gloves and uh, uh, I'll probably get there before uh, Carver uh, because of his extra drive. That's true. You have arrived early. I'm, I'm standing there and I'm yeah, smoking a cigar as he shows up. Hmm. I get out of the car. I go over. Bjorn, uh, how are you feeling? Are you better yeah 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 actually you know uh, just uh, having some food and uh, yeah things are better how's your cat he's good he's good he was hungry but uh he's fine i uh, i i just can't believe we were holed up for how long two days three yeah, yeah, hell? that was bad that was really bad um I'm quiet for a moment, and I start walking towards the door, and then I just turn to Bjorn and go... I've actually got a bad feeling about this. I really hope that's just nerves. Let's let's yeah, go in. Let's go in. Try. Uh, did you get the key? Mm, yes, yes. Using the key that uh, Irene gave to you, uh, you're able to easily open the door to the building. As you come in, um, you notice an elderly couple. They're just out of uh, on, on their way out of uh, apartment 1A. They're looking at you, trying to figure out who you are, probably. What do you do? Um, 1B is uh, Magda's apartment. It's right over there. How are you? Or I'm just going to greet them in German. Oh... Very well, thank you. Oh, are you here to to see one of the one of the people living here? Uh, yeah. Uh, we're friends of Magda's. Oh, Magda, it's been a it's been a while since since we've seen her. I wonder if she's there actually. I haven't? Yeah, it, it was a few days ago actually. How many days? Sometime during the weekend, maybe. Me and uh, me and Rolf here, we, we keep mostly to ourselves, but we do keep a good view of, of the comings and goings of the people in the building. And, uh, yeah, could it have been uh, Sunday morning or something? like? I think maybe she went somewhere. Maybe she left. Yeah? Anyone else coming uh, to her apartment, I mean, to visit her? No, 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 no. Not until you. Uh, not until you. All right. Carver, you want to... Hmm... Yes, I I also say we're just checking in on her. We friends of friends. We have reason to believe that she might be ill and maybe not able to reach a phone or anything. So we just want to go in and check, you know. Oh oh oh. Okay, you have her key then. I I I assume. Oh, yes. Oh okay. Yes, we do. Yes. We yes. Sort of shake their heads a little bit and continue heading out. Well, uh, hope hope you find her. Yeah. Uh, when you're speaking to uh, the uh, elderly couple, you uh, notice that the door to 1C opens. You can sort of glimpse a young man in there. When he when he sees that you see him, he quickly closes the door. Hello to you too. 
I frown a little and go towards her flat, wait for Bjorn to come by, and then put the key in the lock. Actually, no, no, I knock first. You knock. There is no answer. I uh, I go and look at the window. Uh, you look through the window. The curtains are uh, closed, and uh, you can't really see anything from there. All right, we might as well head in, I guess. I still have my cigar, so... Uh, but I'm going to keep smoking because it's the 90s. <laughs> it is the 90s, indeed. The elderly couple did not mind. This is a really weird situation, Bjorn, but I guess if she has a... If she's hurt, I don't know. Yeah, okay, okay. And I open the door. I look surprisingly excited about this situation, having uh, regained some vigor and... Uh, Feels good to do, to do this, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, huh? You um, open the door to the apartment, and uh, in front of you is a hall, a an entrance hall. There's a mail from uh, from Monday and from Tuesday, uh, lying on the floor as you enter, having been pushed through the mail slot in the door. Coat and a jacket hang on the coat hanger. There's a, a series of surreal woodcuts of uh, merged half human, half fish. That decorate the walls. You also see a pair of gloves and a train timetable rest on the small table. I guess I would step forward and cautiously just start. You, uh, you investigate. Eight, nine, ten. Ten. All right. So, what would you like to find out? Hmm. I suppose I will ask what is my gut feeling about what I'm investigating? Your gut feeling just uh, looking at uh, the hall and based on the uh, replies that you had from the elderly couple train uh, timetable um, it does seem as if she has left the city. The train timetable um, as you look at it you see that it is it's a new one and it's turned to the page for trips between Hamburg and Berlin. So you have a pretty good feeling that that is where she has uh, ended up going. I'm sorry. I was, I was, uh, I was kind of curious about the uh, to see if the mail was opened here as well. I'm just uh, having this weird feeling from what happened at my place. When looking at the mail, you uh, find three uh, letters and a postcard that have been forwarded from an address in Berlin. Mm-hmm. The address is Leibnizstrasse 97. Mm. First letter. Yeah is return addressed uh, Alberto Mirandola in Barcelona. Uh, I'm going to check the other ones as well. The second one is returned addressed uh, by Arnold Weiss, Wiedlandstrasse 34 in Berlin. And the postcard? The postcard. There's also a third letter. We take the postcard now. The postcard has no sender address, but it's stamped at the post office in Frankfurt an der Oder, Germany. On the back, sprawling handwriting in barely legible Russian reads, I have seen him, him with large uh, letters. It's signed Pyotr. Hmm. Frankfurt under order, you, uh, you remember hearing that, the name of that city. Irene mentioned it. The Frankfurt Clinic is in, in uh, Frankfurt and Order. It's one of the mental hospitals that uh, Magda spent time at. Oh. Okay. I pocket that one. And uh, what was the third letter? The third letter is return addressed John Masterton, London. Seems to be an invitation of some sorts. You get the feeling that it's kind of some kind of bulk mail thing. Okay. What, after having looked through those, and I'm going to... Sh- uh, Shouts at Carla. You find anything? Hmm. I don't know, actually. I I walk over. I show him the uh, timetable. I remark, I've got a feeling that she might have gone back to Berlin. Oh, yeah. There's stuff here that seems to suggest that she was interested in making a journey there. Maybe that's where she's gone, but don't know why. Well, it, it shows a forwarded address, so I guess I'm guessing uh, this is her address in Berlin. Um, yes. 
So yes, you've come into the hall, you've gone through the mail, you've looked at the timetable. As you see on the map here now, the apartment continues in, there's a few doors. Where do you, uh, where do you wish to go next? So, she's probably just heading back to Berlin. I wonder if we can uh, try and call her there, perhaps. Possibly. I just... Hmm. And I just start walking a little further in. And I kind of go towards that... L the furthest left door. Like, all the way at the end. Into room 8, if you will. Um, so you, um, first of all, come into the living room. In the living room, uh, a TV set sits in front of uh, a pinkish red sofa. The remaining walls are lined with bookcases with glass doors. They contain a broad collection of encyclopedias, non-fiction and fiction books that you can quickly uh, see with your experienced eyes. It's a graphic print hanging over the sofa depicting a uh, frozen reaper staring out over a barren landscape. Two half-dead yucca palms sit on the windowsill a glass door leads to uh, the balcony outside the living room. And you move on uh, through the living room towards the door there that leads into her office. This must be an office. There's a desk with an uh, IBM personal computer that's pressed against one wall. Two bookshelves are dedicated to medical literature. Another shelf has books related to literature history, politics, and economics. Dirty glasses cover the, the surface of the desk. Uh, drinking glasses. Table calendar is set to uh, September 12th. A phone uh, answering machi machine sits beside the computer. The uh, answering machine's light is blinking, indicating uh, recorded messages. I walk over, and I feel a little bad at first, but then I just press the answer machine. You see that there are four messages recorded on the answering machine. First message plays. Uh, this is uh, Radar Schönberg from the Welt Zeitung. I'm still waiting for your article about the lobby groups. Uh, have you sent it? Please call me. The second message, please. Philip here. Uh, <laughs> something horrible is going to happen. Call me. Third message. Uh, this is uh, Radar Schönberg here. We have uh, postponed the article until the, the next issue. Call me once you get home. The fourth message, please. It's Philip. You've got to call me. Soon it will be too late. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign The Black Madonna for the tabletop roleplaying game Cult Divinity Lost. The Black Madonna was originally constructed by Gunilla Jonsson and Mikael Petersen in 1991, with additional material for the 2017 edition by Marco Behrmann, Matthias Fredriksson, Peter Nalo and Robin Lillianberg. Cult Divinity Lost is published by Helmgast. The music was created by Atrium Carceri and is used with permission from their label Cryo Chamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel to hear more excellent dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us comments, input and feedback there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and review us on iTunes so that more people will find out about the show. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.